Hi, I'm Jervis Lewis, and welcome to How to Restore WordPress. Uh, I'm sure you've watched the previous video in which we have backed up WordPress, and this is a follow-up, and in this case, we're going to restore WordPress, and we're going to do this in two versions. We have two options here. Number one, we can restore the same domain to the same domain. So you would do this in case of a disaster recovery. If you've had your website living on domain.com and your host came back and said, hey, we've wiped you clean. There you go. This is how you restore the WordPress instance onto the same domain. Or you do this when you move hosts. So you keep the same domain, but as soon as it's pointed to the new host, obviously all your files and your database is going to be blank. So that's option one. Option two that you have is you want to restore your WordPress backup to a different domain. So, for example, you've had your website living on domain.com and now you want to make a couple of changes on your local machine. So then your domain effectively would become localhost. Or you do the other way around, that you've developed a website on your local system and now it's time for it to live on a, on a live web host. So then you would bring localhost to domain.com. And the process is more or less identical, apart from a couple of tweaks that we have to make at the end to tell WordPress, hey, you know, you're now living somewhere else. And WordPress is quite happy with it, but obviously it needs to know its new address as such. So previously, in how to back up WordPress, if you haven't watched it, I encourage you to have a look at it. We did a couple of things. We did copy all our WordPress files across to our local system so that we have the entire WordPress installation, all uploaded files and all that. And we have also read out the database into what's known as a flat file. So we end up with an SQL file or a zip file, zip version of that file, but one file. So we end up with a lot of files. I have them here on my local system and I'm going to demo this for you step by step. So what we need to bring our WordPress website back online, either to the same or to a different domain, is a couple of ingredients I'd like to call them. Uh, if you're working with a remote host, you will need something like FileZilla. It's an FTP client. We've worked with that before. If you're working on a local system, if you already have the files on your local system, then you don't need FileZilla. But I'll explain that in greater detail later. In either case, we will need access to phpMyAdmin in order to bring our database back into the system, no matter if it's local or remote. If you're working with any kind of remote system, you also need credentials to those. This goes without saying, so I'm not going to go into any details of that, but I would expect you to have your FTP and your database access details. Your host will gladly help you out there. So how does the restore process work? Well, first, we're going to copy all the files that we have from the backup into the new system, be that local or remote. Next, we're going to take our database file and import that into an empty database. If we're working with a different domain, then we also need to tweak in the options table two values there, the site URL and the home, and I'll show you how to do that with phpMyAdmin. And lastly, we need to tweak the wp-config file. This is where WordPress gets told about the, the database it's supposed to use. It will we'll tell it the user, the host, the, um, the password of the database. And if that has changed, if it's different for a new host, for example, then we need to tell WordPress that it's in fact different now. And because it's such an important process, we will do this twice in this video. In the first version, I will restore Julia's website from julia.verslewis.com to my local system. I'm going to use MAMP for this, and from then on, the website is going to live on localhost colon 888 forward slash Julia. It's a very different domain, and we're going to tell WordPress all about that. And with this version, I'm going to start from scratch. So empty directory, empty database, no database user, no nothing. And in the second version, I'm going to restore Julia's website to a different remote host. So in this case, when it was living at julia.verslois.com, it will now live at wpguru.co.uk forward slash Julia. And for that process, I'm going to be starting with an existing WordPress instance. And that is created as a one-click installer with the web host. So we will already have a working version of WordPress there, and we will have a database. It's just not the same database and the same domain as it was before. So without further ado, let's get started. 
So here's the patient on the remote host, julia.versalus.com. This is my wife's website, and you'll see it looks very different from a standard WordPress installation. We're using the Bueno theme here by the wonderful Woo themes, and we're going to bring all that onto the local system. So all I have here currently is an empty directory. This is my new domain. This is the old domain. And we're going to make sure we're going to have everything that you see here on the local host. As we discussed in running WordPress on your laptop, this here is just a directory that MAMP kindly gave me. It's, uh, it lives in, let me show you, if I open my finder window and in HDDocs, this is it, Julia. This is the directory that's currently empty. And the first step we're going to undertake here is we're going to open this file. This is what I've made in when I've created Julia's backup and this is full of files and all these files I'm going to highlight them all and in fact I'm going to whoops and in fact I'm going to copy them all across here there we go all 300 megabytes so this is probably that big because Julia's uploaded a lot of images there there we go that's done it if we were to go and refresh this site now then we will end up with the database connection error and that is because the WP config file is still looking at the old database which is supposedly a local host which is supposedly have uh, certain credentials that I of course don't have on my local system and if I double click this on my system this is going to be opened with Dreamweaver this uh, may be different on your system or you can just use a text editor for this and here on line 17, this is where WordPress is being told about the current database details. So we, we have a database, we have a user, we have a password, a host, and the two last two options are not important. Uh, so these things WordPress needs to know about. And on my system, neither the database nor the user exists. So let's change that. If I go over to MAMP here, I'm going to PHP my admin. These are all my databases here. None of them match, obviously, what I've what I've had on the remote system. So, I will go over to users on the bottom here. I'll add a user, and I'll give it different details. So, username is Julia. Host is in fact local. The password. I'll make it nice and simple. I'm just going to call it password here. And we also want to create a database and grant all privileges. And we go for add. And there we go, Julia has been added. I've rushed through this because we've talked about this in a previous tutorial. So I'm just going to go, database name is Julia, whoops. User is also Julia. Password was password, and localhost is the same without the port number. So if I save this, I don't need to copy this onto remote host because we are on the local host. I could refresh it, but WordPress is going to see an empty database it can connect to and says, Hey, shall we go and install WordPress? And I'm going to have to say no because we already have. WordPress. We just haven't copied the database into MySQL. And this is exactly what we're going to do in the next step. So we're going to go back into phpMyAdmin. We've already selected our database here. And we head over to the import option. Browse for the file. In my case, that was on the desktop under Julia Backup. And in fact, I've made a little folder here so I can find the database. It's just called database. Let's so double click that and on the very bottom hit go a couple of seconds later we have all the values that we had on the remote host on here there's one other things I've forgotten to tweak in the WP config file and that is that in Julia's case our database prefix is not WP underscore it is Julia underscore so let's go back to our text editor or Dreamweaver 
into the WP config file and scroll down a little bit further. Ah, there we go. Table prefix. It is already set to Julia, so that's perfect. But it's something that you might want to check out, just in case. In the web browser, instead of telling WordPress that something needs to be installed, we go back to the domain that we just wanted to check and refresh. Nothing happens. Why is that? Well, because WordPress or the database tells WordPress, hey, we still live at julia.verslois.com. But that's not the case anymore. So this is where people often get frustrated and, you know, let's, let's not do that. Let's go back into phpMyAdmin and let's fix that. In the options table, so in my case it's julia underscore options, in your case it may be wp underscore options, make sure you head over to the browse tab. So if you look at the structure, this isn't going to show you much, you want to go into browse. And this is where you'll see all the values that are stored in this table. In fact, the very first option in the table is called site URL. And this is where WordPress remembers, I live at julia.verslois.com. Well, not anymore. Let's click on the little pencil icon here and edit that. So in my case, it's localhost 8888 forward slash julia. I'm going to copy this because I need that value a second time. Hit go, which will save this new value, as we can see here. But that is not enough either. Scroll down to the bottom onto the next page. It only shows you 30 values at a time. And you will see uh, position 39 here. There's another value that's called home. And that's also set to julia.verslois.com. I can show you in the WordPress backend in a minute what these are the equivalent values of. So again, go to the little pencil icon. Paste the same value in there and hit go again. So that's our database tweaked and WordPress now knows it no longer lives at the previous domain, it now lives somewhere else. In fact if we copy this into our browser bar here and if we refresh this, still nothing happens. <laughs> Why is that you wonder? It's probably because I'm using Firefox and sometimes Firefox thinks I'm going to use a cached result for this. Let's tell Firefox, look, clear the recent history clear everything, clear it now. And now let's try this again. Here's Julia's website. Exactly as we left it, but look at the domain up here. It lives somewhere else now. Let's check it through. Let's go into the back end. Just like before, it's a different, different domain here. and I can log in and I'm in the back end on my new domain which is fantastic. Those two values by the way that we've just tweaked they're the equivalent of your settings general options WordPress address URL and site address. So these are the two values that we've just changed in the in the database here in the options table. So that was version one. Let's quickly recap what we've done here step by step. So first of all I've copied all the files to the new directory, to the empty directory. I also needed to create a database and a user in, the, in MySQL. Once that's done I needed to restore the database by the import function in phpMyAdmin. Then I needed to tweak the options table, site URL and the home URL value specifically. And once I've done that, I needed to tell WordPress in the WP config file that there's a new database in town. And that was it. Because this was so much fun, and because we could all do with a bit more practice, I'm going to show you version 2, how to do this on the remote host. The procedure here is slightly different. This is my new WordPress instance, and this is already an up and running WordPress website. It doesn't look exactly the way we want it because it's the default install with the 2012 theme and that now lives at wpguru.co.uk forward slash Julia. That's a remote host. And our previous website, the one that, we're actually, that we've uh, just backed up and the one that we actually want to restore, still lives at julia.verslois.com. So over the next few minutes I'm going to make this website here look exactly like that website and that'll be copied from one remote host to the other.
And for that, we need FileZilla, or at least your favorite FTP client. I'm already logged in here. This on the right-hand side here is my remote host, which contains all the files for the existing WordPress instance, which is this one. This is the one we want to overwrite. And on the right-hand side here, these are my local files. Uh, I've got a folder on my desktop, which is called Julia. I'm just going to go into that. And these are the files that need to be on the remote host. Before we start copying anything, and this is absolutely important, in this case, because we have a running WordPress instance already, we have a working WP config file on the remote host. And that contains very important information about how do we connect to the existing database. So even though your web host will give you access to PHP My Admin, um, you may not have the exact details of what is my database host, what is my database username, my database name, and what is my password. But in the remote WP config files, that that is that is already uh, in there, and it's we know it's working, and it'll be different on the WP config file that we're going to copy over here in a minute, which is this one. So the moral of the story is do copy this file. You can delete everything from the remote host apart from that file. And what I like doing is, uh, first of all, save this somewhere so that it can't be overwritten. So I, I would usually rename this and say php config dot uh, remote in this case. Just name it something that you can remember what it is. So obviously if you do that, if you rename that on the remote host, the current WordPress instance on the remote host isn't going to work anymore, but that's cool. So I'm going to copy this into Julia's backup directory so that I know I have it in a safe place. And then what I'll do is I will go to the local site here, mark everything, and drag everything across to the remote host. This can take quite a bit of time, so in my case here it's about uh, 300 megabytes because Julia's uploaded quite a lot of photos and some videos so this is going to take some time and once it's done I'm going to be back. Right, everything is copied across. We're happy. We have two WP config files currently. We have the original one from Julia's website, this one here, wpconfig.php and we have the one from the new WordPress instance, the wpconfig.remote, the one that I've just renamed. Now, it's important that we kind of merge these two files, and to do this, I'm a big believer of let's make a brand new directory, copy them to our local system, and examine them both. Let's do just that. So on our local system, maybe even in, our, in Julia's backup directory, we're going to create a new directory, and we're going to call it uh, config, perhaps config, everything's empty, everything's groovy, and we're going to copy both those files over. Now remember, we only really need one in our final product, but right now we need both. And so I can tell them apart, I'm going to call, I'm going to leave the one from WP config remote, that's from the new remote instance, and I'm going to call this one WP config dot old. So we have old one and the new remote one. This is great. Let's open them both up and see what happens. So if I do this here, I go to Edit, right-click and Edit. On my system, Dreamweaver is going to open up. You can just do this with a text editor. I'm just using Dreamweaver here. And these are the details for Julia's old database. Let's go back to FileZilla, whoops, over here, and also edit the remote file. So now we have two. We've got the old one and we've got the new one. So what we need to do is we need to remember these database details here because these are the ones that Julia's new WordPress instance is going to expect. This is the new database it's going to be able to talk to. So I'm going to copy these here, all these values here. I'm going to go back to my wp-config old file and paste them over here. There we go. Now we've got the old configuration with the new database details. Makes sense, right? I know this is a complex topic to grasp, but it's one of those things. I'm going to save that, go back to FileZilla, and now my 
dot old file is technically the only one I want to keep. So I'm gonna I can rename this to what it needs to be wpconfig.php. Remember if anything goes wrong, we always have the original file, so that's why we're doing this in a separate directory that we can play around with, mess around with as much as we like. So we've got one wpconfig PHP file. This is great. I'm going to go back to the remote host and we're going to delete both of the ones that we don't want there anymore. So both config files are gone from the remote host. The one we wanted to keep, the wpconfig.php, the amended file goes over. So now our new remote instance can talk with the old data to the new database. The data in the database isn't going to make sense because that's still the old data. So in fact, if we wanted to have a look at that, this is the new instance here. If we're going to, um, if we're going to refresh that, WordPress is going to say, hey, look, you know, this I can connect to the database, but it's empty. Shall we install WordPress? Just like before, we say no. Thank you very much for the offer, WordPress. Not going to happen. Instead, we're going to go back to our PHP My Admin, and this is I'm using Plesk here. So in Plesk, PHP My Admin is under Websites and Domains. On the right-hand side, here under Databases, and I've got three databases to choose from. This one is the one in question: Admin underscore Julia hyphen Test. Cryptic name, I know, but it's one of those things. This is the database we want. We're going to Web Admin. And that'll bring up our PHP My Admin interface. And the reason why WordPress is kind of complaining here that it wants to install a new instance is we see a WordPress installation that starts with WP underscore. But as you remember, Julia's database started with Julia underscore. So WordPress is now looking at Julia underscore and says, hey, there's nothing there. Shall I install it? And we don't want WordPress to do that. In fact, we want to drop all the tables that are currently in here. So this is how you do that. You go to check all on the bottom, and with selected, we want to drop. This is a one-way street. You've got to be absolutely sure what you're doing here, because this is going to permanently destroy the data in your database. In my case, I am sure. I'm going to drop everything, and I'm going to end up with an empty database. An empty database, though, that I can connect to, and that's important. And uh, in fact, if we wanted to go back to our to our remote host now, we will get the same message. So WordPress is going to say, "Hey, nothing there. Shall we install something?" We say no. Say no. Less is more. Go back to PHP My Admin and do exactly what we did before. We go into Import, and this is now where we tell the new system let's import some data from a database file, which we have saved on the desktop, in Julia Backup, in our little database folder here. Database. Let's open that. And on the bottom here, let's click Go. This is going to now import Julia's previous data. And there we go. We can see that here. Julia underscore tables have been imported. This is good news. Let's go back to our new remote WordPress installation here and see how Firefox copes with this. Not bad at all. So we have the theme, we have everything. The only thing we don't have is uh, we don't have any posts. This is not exactly what we want. But of course, if you remember from the previous video, there's a couple of things that we need to do. We need to tell the new database, hey, you now live somewhere else. So let's quickly copy this here, copy this URL. This is where we want WordPress to be. And go back into our database. Go to the Julia underscore options table. Make sure we're on browse here, not on structure. You can see my PHP, my PHP, my admin on the remote host looks a little bit different than that from MAMP. So that sometimes they make uh, graphical changes from one version to another. But the concepts are still the same. So I go to browse. And I find the first value here, which is site URL. And that is still pointing to the old domain. We don't want that anymore. So we go into edit, the little pencil icon here. And the old domain gets replaced with the new domain. Hit go on the bottom. 
and that's done that and we also need to go to the second page and do the same thing with our home value here position number 39 so again go on to the little pencil icon here paste that new value in and hit go this has now tweaked our imported database to look at a different to tell WordPress it now lives in a different domain let's go back here and see if we can make sense of this or if uh, WordPress can make sense of this I'm going to refresh the page and what I'm expecting is exactly what's happening here everything comes up just as it was on the old website it's just living in a new domain so in fact let's let's compare the two same website old domain same website new domain let me see if I can log in as well just to prove a point keep an eye on your domain here that if you do this and it changes to the old domain then you haven't tweaked the values properly and everything seems to be working fine should it should your browser not react the way you expect it then you gotta do what I did earlier and go into tools here on Firefox and hit clear recent history the other browsers have similar problems every browser works with a cache and sometimes browsers just get confused and they look at old cache data and so the results aren't exactly what you're expecting and that is it let's have a look at what we've done here so first of all We've made a copy of our existing wp-config file. That is the new wp-config file of your existing new remote WordPress instance. So make a copy of that, very important. Next, tweak this file or tweak your old file to include the changes of the new wp-config file. The database connection, database user, database everything. Copy all the files from your backup to your remote host, so the entire WordPress installation plus all the content files, everything that you've made a copy of when you made a backup. This will overwrite existing files, of course, on the host. Then you restore your database via phpMyAdmin. You may also have to drop existing tables. In my case, it wasn't strictly necessary, but I'm a big fan of drop what you don't need, so drop all your existing tables. Then restore them via the phpMyAdmin import option. And last not least, don't forget to tweak the options table, specifically the site URL and the home options. And that will restore your WordPress instance on a different remote host.